moving from a sedentary to a physically active societal way of life. This is Up On Our Feet. Welcome to Up On Our Feet. As we've heard from guests here on Up On Our Feet, the body and brain work together. They're not separate entities. Rather, they're integrated with the body influencing the brain at the same time that the brain is influencing the body. And the brain is not just a thinking organ. It is a thinking and movement organ that in addition to thinking and processing information, activates and responds to physical movement. And just as the brain is influenced by physical activity, it's also influenced by what we eat, just as our bodies are influenced by what we eat. So this is the first of a two-part series entitled, How the Body and Brain Are Integrated. For this first part, we'll look at this integration from the perspective of physical activity. And part two, we'll examine the integration of the body and brain from the perspective of nutrition. Our guest for this two-part series on how the body and brain are integrated is a world-renowned neuroscientist who has spent several decades researching and documenting these issues. Professor Fernando Gomez Pena heads up the NeuroLife Laboratory in the Department of Neurosurgery and Department of Integrative Biology and Physiology at UCLA, the University of California at Los Angeles. The lab's stated mission is to, quote, harness the power of diet and exercise to prevent or cure neurological and psychiatric disorders. Professor Gomez Pena's research basically involves the study of how exercise and diet impact both our bodies and brains. Professor Gomez Pena is also a member of the American Sports Institute's International Board of Advisors. So for part one of this two-part series, we're here with Professor Gomez Pena to examine how the body and brain are integrated through physical activity and how this type of acti activity simultaneously impacts both our bodies and brains. Professor Gomez Pena, it's nice to have you with us. Okay, thank you so much for the, such a great introduction. It's a great pleasure to be here and, and to chat with you. Okay, so tell you what, let's start off by framing this with a very common real life example. On a regular basis, someone goes out for a daily 30 minute walk. This is an everyday person, not a high powered athlete. So from the perspectives of both the body and brain, including how they're integrated, what's happening to this person related to the daily walks? Yeah, it has been a lot of things, isn't it? The to walk uh, is much more than people think, isn't it? In terms of activate a lot of the physiology of the body, cardiovascular system. Um, and, and at the same time, the, the walk actually generates a, a whole communication uh, between the body and the brain, isn't it? Because the, we have a lot of activity that is affecting muscles and, and the whole periphery. But at the same time, uh, the brain uh, is capturing a lot of this activity, but, and the brain is working at the same time, isn't it, in terms of generating uh, thoughts, generating a lot of issues related to the pleasure of walking, and or for some people, maybe not, that much pleasure, isn't it? That the, you need to discuss that, isn't it? But the but the idea is to is to is to have some pleasure, and then and the and as I said, uh, there is a whole range of communication uh, in terms of the this activity. The brain is uh, producing uh, factors uh, which go to the body and. Uh, molecules that go to the body, the body answer uh, in, in a way uh, they um, can elaborate a response. So, so the, we, we extend this communication for a long time and, and also maybe uh, Dr. Hillman have answered these questions also in the past uh, that, the, that the speed uh, 
by which uh, we are walking actually is so important, isn't it? If we walk slowly, it's different if we go walk faster. So, but I think we have time to discuss that. Okay, so then what is, what actually happens physiologically? Person goes out for the walk, what is happening to their body? How is the body being impacted on a physiological level? Yeah, uh, for one thing, the, the, um, there is a muscle activity. I mean, we are using our muscle of our legs uh, to generate activity. And so the muscles, uh, what they are doing is pumping blood uh, to the rest of the body, isn't it? The, and, and that's something extremely important, isn't it? When we are sitting, uh, we are uh, not uh, using that capacity of the muscles uh, to pump blood to the rest of the, the body. And, and at the same time of pumping blood, a uh, muscle uh, are uh, making uh, molecules, uh, particularly molecules uh, that can go through the circulation to other organs uh, and other um, um, that organs which are in the body uh, and also these uh, molecules uh, can also cross the blood brain barrier and the, and they can go to the brain and the also, uh, when we are walking, we are activating the, the hormonal system, the, the hypothalamic pituitary system is sending hormones, isn't it, to the rest of the body, and there is a whole orchestration of hormones. Um, also, the body, uh, when we are walking, uh, is something very important that people should consider in uh, we are activating several systems. Uh, uh, one of them is the gastrointestinal tract, isn't it? The, our stomach, esophageals, and, and everything. And, and for one simple thing, uh, this walking uh, is activating a, a, a lot of um, uh, processes uh, that are related to digestion of food, isn't it? And, the, <clears throat> and can initiate a, a, a lot of events related to this. So there are an, an incredible number of things. Uh, on the simple side, isn't it? People also can have some uh, type of stimulation to go to the bathroom, which actually is, is very important, isn't it? If people have been sitting for a long time, uh, especially when they are becoming senior, uh, they need some type of stimulation for that, isn't it? So the, um, also we are activating uh, the immune system, so the, which is extremely important isn't it, to keep our body uh, healthy. Uh, and so, so physiologically, uh, basically uh, we keep the, the body uh, in motion, isn't it? And, and, and also we, we initiate uh, this uh, bidirectional communication with the brain uh, in terms of um, molecules. And this actually can be postponed uh, for certain time uh, in terms of the, 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 that is very much uh, depending on the, the activation that the, we are doing when we are walking. Okay, so then are you saying that when, when this person goes walking, from a physiological perspective, with the blood pumping and, and the, the uh, gut system and things like this, what we're actually doing is tuning up the organs in the body, and at the same time, I think you mentioned the uh, uh, regarding immune system. Are we strengthening the immune system? Is that what what's happening here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the the immune system is very much, uh, and that's what been shown uh, many different ways, isn't it? That the 
exercise activate the, uh, the immune system and the, and the <clears throat> um, we are uh, tuning the immune system and exercise uh, has been known also to create uh, some type of immunity, Im immunity isn't it for uh, many disorders and and also in the times of the COVID-19, uh, this has been a, a very important issue because at the beginning of the pandemic, isn't it, the uh, people tended to be uh, in isolation um, and, the, and, and certainly that was an issue, isn't it, that can, the immune system can be pain uh, for, for all of this. Uh, another thing uh, which is extremely important uh, also will relate, related to the pandemic uh, has been the, the action of exercise uh, reducing depression. Uh, immobility uh, promotes depression, as you say. The, uh, uh, I mean, people don't realize, isn't it, but the too much uh, inactivity uh, can um do very bad things uh, to our mind isn't it like uh, um and uh, uh, in terms of uh, people feeling uh, the pressure of so many emotions that they 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 come to haunt us isn't it uh, in times like uh, we don't uh, practice exercise but this exercise has been shown that the, it's one of the best way to fight depression, isn't it? And just going for a small walk actually is, a, <clears throat> is so important. Uh, another um, uh, important physiological event uh, that we are going to be discussing uh, in a separate uh, interview uh, is this uh, communication between exercise uh, and food. Uh, because uh, actually exercise also uh, seems to reduce uh, the negative effects of certain diet and also exercise have been shown uh, to boost uh, the effect of uh, good diets. So, the, um, so it's a whole package, isn't it, that the, that the exercise uh, seems to be one of the, the main orchestrators uh, for all these uh, actions uh, in the body. Okay, so the physical, the, the walking, the physical activity sends the blood to the organs, including hor uh, hormonal uh, issues here, and they fine tune the organs, they strengthen, the, the blood flow strengthens the uh, uh, immune system. What happens with exercise when the blood goes to the brain? What's the actual process of how it impacts the brain? Yeah, uh, so the blood, you know, is so important, isn't it? Because uh, blood, uh, what it does uh, is to carry oxygen uh, to tissues, uh, including the brain, and also blood carry the nutrients uh, from different parts of the body, and the, and all so and these uh, are extremely essential things. Um, so the and that was perhaps one of the first uh, aspect that we learned uh, about the action of exercise on the brain. That exercise was increasing the blood supply to many uh, brain regions. So, um, so then the, so what exercise does is in it is to um, bring uh, this uh, energy supply and oxygen uh, to uh, many brain regions uh, and also other um, tissues uh, in the body that the, <clears throat> um, which is extremely important, isn't it, for the for the dynamic and and the maintenance uh, of these regions. Uh, uh, and also, I have to tell you, the <clears throat> it's also known um, 
that people uh, who are sedentary uh, for a long time, uh, I mean, uh, you may know about this, there is a, a principle uh, that applies to many things uh, and, 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 and also the, to the action of exercise, uh, which is uh, use it or lose it, isn't it? So the, if we don't use the, this cardiovascular system, if we are not using the arteries, and uh, many of these can collapse. And it's amazing, isn't it? The people who have been sedentary for a, a long time uh, may have a less number of uh, arteries uh, in muscles or other tissues uh, because actually they lose it since, since they don't use it. Uh, same thing happened to the brain and, and other regions, uh, but the, <clears throat> we need to be active and in order to uh, use the, the capacity uh, of those regions and and the more exercise uh, that we do, uh, the better. Uh, since uh, we know, for example, people who, who practice a lot of exercise, or, uh, so they, they have a much uh, better breathing capacity than, than other people. Um, and <clears throat> so they, so, and, and also, you may notice, isn't it, like uh, you, people who practice uh, exercise get less tired than other people, can have much more uh, uh, capacity, they look younger and, and more dynamic and, and everything. So it's a, <clears throat> so the, so exercise uh, is the main or orchestrator for all of these and, and, and that's actually also how is perceived uh, the action of uh, exercise and activity uh, during evolution, isn't it? Because of the, the, when we evolve, isn't it, from primitive, primitive men and, uh, and, I mean, exercise was extremely important uh, in order to, <clears throat> develop a body that uh, was a uh, high capacity uh, for uh, many activities and also healthy in order to resist diseases and, and the <clears throat> that could cope, isn't it, uh, with a lot of the challenge uh, that we have uh, in our life. Mm. Okay. You were talking about uh, you know, we start off talking about what happens when somebody's physically active, and then you were talking about use it or lose it, and talking about people who are just the opposite, where they hardly get any physical activity at all. And you uh, once wrote a paper a number of years ago called Revenge of the Sit, and this was about, if you will, how sitting or sedentary behavior takes its revenge on human beings being ever more sedentary. So is that what you're talking about here where all those positive things that you were mentioning uh, for the person who goes out and gets their daily uh, activity, just the opposite happens to people who are sedentary. And this is the revenge of the sit or sedentary behavior, yes? Exactly, yeah, that's the that's idea, isn't it that the, <clears throat> Um, it's basically the, 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 the principle of use it or lose it in action, isn't it? That the, if we, I mean, our body uh, was built uh, through thousands of years of evolution uh, to be uh, dynamic, isn't it? To be uh, using our legs and, and everything. And, um, uh, trying to get food, uh, fighting against predator and everything. And that's what uh, our body was, was built for. Isn't it the, the fact now that the, we can get uh, access to entertainment, isn't it, uh, watching television and, and also 
a lot of technology uh, that uh, we don't need to use uh, all the exercise that we were using in the past. Um, the um, has creating a, a lot of issues because what it means uh, the um, the genes uh, that we have in our body were uh, uh, created or or evolved, isn't it, from a, a very active lifestyle. So our genes actually are based on a high level of activity uh, in order to maintain uh, healthiness. Uh, so if we don't have that, isn't it? And, and, and now we have uh, the same genes uh, that uh, people have a thousand of years ago, uh, exposed to a sedentary lifestyle uh, doesn't make any sense for the, for the genes, isn't it? Because that the, the genes actually need uh, activity and, and we, can, we can see that, isn't it, uh, in, in our home and we can see that. Uh, uh, I had a German shepherd, for example, dog, isn't it, that uh, I, realize uh, how much activity the animal needs isn't it I, I he comes every every morning and every night because he he wants to go running and and actually no question isn't it uh, uh, his body actually was built uh, to do a lot of exercise and no question if that doesn't happen then then the, it would be uh, problematic isn't it for the health of the animal um, <clears throat> so uh, that's how, that's how the the body was built, and and that's why exercise uh, is so um, important, and um, and also as people say, uh, exercise uh, is probably the best medicine uh, that we have these days, isn't it? Okay, so how do I? Are you saying that, in a sense, the way our, over millions of years of evolution, the way our, our genes were programmed, that was done through constantly being physical activity. So are you saying then that the sedentary behavior that is so much a part of the world today, especially Western civilization, is, it's almost as if we're violating our own evolutionary genetic makeup. Is is that what's going on? Yeah, exactly. So that, that that's the that's the idea, isn't it? That the the I mean, our body was built uh, to exercise, and the and and if we don't do that, uh, we we pay for that. Isn't it that the, because uh, we are violating uh, our own evolutionary makeup that made our body uh, in that way, and the, and that's very well known already, isn't it? We know now that there are a lot of diseases uh, that are very much related to sedentary lifestyle and 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 the and the so the. I think there should be a big push, isn't it, for people to do exercise activity and 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 not only exercise. I mean, the the exercise uh, also work with other uh, environmental factors, like uh, we are going to be discussing later, like uh, nutrition and also uh, happiness. <clears throat> the the science of happiness, actually, the that also exists, isn't it, in terms of uh, uh, how exercise can be combined with all of these to have good thoughts and to have a, a life, lifestyle that can be <clears throat> positive uh, in many different ways. Mm. Okay, so then from a historical evolutionary perspective, you know, we've just been talking about the body and physical activity and its impact, uh, uh, physical activity, its impact on the body. How did the body and brain over millions of years of evolution become integrated? 
what was the process for how that happened? Or, you know, is that just the way human beings were created? Yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the beauty of life, isn't it? The, if we start with the cell, isn't it? The, we are thinking like uh, millions and millions of years if we were, there was only one cell that they started uh, uh, dividing and, and communicating with other cells. That's in the same way, isn't it? When the, the creation of life uh, meant that the, there should be a, a full integration of cell activity uh, and by the many cell component of any entity. And, and that's uh, how, how it happened. And, uh, and now when we, we have a, I mean, our, our organism composed of the brain, different tissues, different organs and, and everything. And it's kind of silly to think about this, but the, um, the, um, when we are taught in the, in the school, I mean, in the in basic school and everything, and, 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 we, and when we study different organs, for example, we said, okay, we are going to study the heart or the stomach or the brain. Uh, I don't know, it creates the, the idea that these organs are separate entities is <laughs> for me not well, later on I, when I had to realize isn't it that the, the body talked to the brain and everything and I said yeah wait a minute isn't it I mean that's how it's supposed to be isn't it because the 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 I mean all of the there is a whole integration and there is a continuum isn't it the every cell is connected to um, to other cells uh, and other tissues and, and everything. And, and that's extremely important because the, um, uh, theoretically, uh, what happened to one part of the body uh, in those terms uh, would be affecting, isn't it, other part of the body, isn't it, because of the is, is one unit in the reality we, for a study purpose, uh, we separate them, but, the, but in the reality it's both of them. So the, also in neuroscience, uh, a lot of people when they study neuroscience, the, some people study the brain, uh, some people study the spinal cord, uh, and always I tell people, isn't it, I, mean, I mean, think about, the, this is in it, the, the spinal cord is connected to the brain and also, I mean, you cannot separate because one thing is long and the other thing is uh, sort of more concentrated in a mass. Um, but anyway, uh, everything uh, works together and then, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and it's so beautiful uh, in the sense uh, how the brain communicate uh, with the body uh, because the, there is a whole anatomy that the, the brain communicate uh, with practically every organ and every tissue. So we have something called the um, autonomic nervous systems. Uh, we have the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, and this is a system um, which for most of it uh, is autonomic uh, that we, we don't have a, a conscious uh, that the, we are using the system. However, we know when we are not using the system, isn't it, when we get sick, isn't it, when we have a stomach poison or we have a, a, some type of depression that can be created uh, by <clears throat> a different organs, isn't it? So the, so, but there is a very perfect connection. Uh, so we have this uh, autonomic nervous system. We also have the hormonal system. So the, we have the brain and the, the hypothalamus, uh, pituitary gland, the, that is releasing hormones uh, through the circulation uh, to the whole body. Uh, we also have the immune system. So the, we have the immune system that is releasing 
uh, immune uh, molecules, isn't it, to the whole body that very much in connection uh, to the brain and, and the body. So, so there is a perfect communication and, and also, uh, I think everyone had heard um, about the microbiota, isn't it, the bacteria that they, uh, we like it or not, uh, we have about, each person has about five pounds of bacteria in the body mm -hmm. uh, and we need them. I mean, we need, uh, we need the bacteria to, to be on our friend side. Uh, and then, so, the, so as I said, all of this is part of the, the communication, isn't it? The, and, the, um, and, and we are born um, in this way, isn't it? We are born uh, in terms of this communication and, the, <clears throat> and, and different cultures in the world, uh, they use this uh, in different ways. Uh, some cultures, uh, for example, like India or Asia in general, uh, people are more, uh, they have some type of more uh, culture in order to handle this in terms of meditation, in terms of also uh, the way that they eat is in, it, is in order to keep better this communication. So, the, so as I said, uh, it, it's a... It's part of our life uh, that uh, we had the brain uh, talking uh, to the body, and and <clears throat> and when we are talking about exercise or foods and everything, uh, basically these are the main components uh, uh, which are activated by the communication. Okay. Final question: From all your years of research and all the papers you've authored and co-authored, from a big picture perspective, what's the big message, the big takeaway, the major conclusion you've come to from all your work regarding physical activity and the brain? Yeah, it's, it's perhaps the, what we are discussing now, um, the, um, when, I started working on exercise many years ago. I have a, a lot of questions, isn't it, how the exercise could affect the brain. Um, <clears throat> but later on, I start to realize, isn't it, that the, the, in order to understand that, uh, we need to uh, broaden uh, our uh, perspective, isn't it, in terms of we need to consider the body, we need to consider everything. So the, so I think the, the main um, learning issue on all of this uh, is try to come up uh, with some type of um, a model, isn't it? How uh, the brain communicate with the body and how exercise uh, can be connected to, to this equation and not only exercise, uh, how exercise can also be integrated with uh, foods, can be integrated with emotions, uh, and, can, <clears throat> and can be modulated, uh, isn't it, in, in, on a daily basis uh, in order to, to perform a life in the way that we want it, isn't it, in a, in, I mean, being on the healthy side and on the happy side. So as I said, uh, coming back to the question again, is, the, is, is try to understand all of this integration uh, in terms of the body talking to brain and talking to uh, all of this uh, component that I mentioned to you already. Okay. Professor Fernando Gomez Pena of the University of California at Los Angeles. Thanks for being with us on Up On Our Feet. Thank you so much for having me and, and it has been a great pleasure uh, to be here.